What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking all about Twitter. This is a service that I use every day. I love the product, at Galley130. Follow me if you don't already. I get almost all my news from Twitter. I follow my favorite newspapers, online magazines, investors that I think are smart. I love the product, but as a company, they're struggling immensely, and I think it's a fascinating case study in stock to look at. So today I wanna to do a quick analysis of Twitter as a company. First of all, a little background on myself. Deleted Facebook five years ago, still do Instagram a little, still do Snap a little, but full disclosure, Twitter is my main social media platform. But as an analyst investor, I'm sort of skeptical about the company. They came out of the gates hot when they IPO'd a couple years ago. Growth was incredibly impressive. The platform was still growing. And then all of a sudden in mid 2015, growth completely stalled, actually declined for a little bit. Revenue has taken a huge hit recently and slowed down dramatically. The stock has gotten hammered and it's kind of meandering in the middle of nowhere. To take a step back, Twitter was originally founded by Evan Williams and Jack Dorsey. Eventually, when it was getting ready to IPO, they left. A guy by the name of Dick Costolo became the CEO and was a CEO through the public offering into 2015. And then in 2015, when all these struggles were happening, management and the board was pressuring for a new CEO replacement. And who did they bring back? Jack Dorsey. The only headache is that Jack Dorsey was still CEO of Square at the time, which caused a bunch of controversy. And now he's actually can still, two years later, leading both companies. And I would say doing a remarkable job. I think Jack Dorsey is one of the best leaders and executives in the entire tech universe right now. So I'm giving him the benefit of the out, I think he's driving Twitter in the right direction. In fact, the core of Twitter's value is how many people are using the platform every month. If you look at the monthly active users, you'll see that story that I was telling you about. In mid-2015, we have an almost immediate stall in the company's user growth, bait, growth base, topping out at about 307, 305 million users. That's right around when Jack Dorsey takes the helm, starts streamlining the company's focus, and ever since he's took the helm, it kind of looks like user growth has been accelerating. That's impressive. I think the numbers don't lie. Here, Jack Dorsey has done a great job at boosting engagement in the Twitter app. Additionally, the company is also telling you that they're doing a great job growing their daily active users. This is a metric they don't disclose on absolute terms. They're not telling you how many daily active users they have, they're just telling you whether it's growing or not. I think they need to fix this, get on Snap's level, get on Facebook's level, come on Twitter, disclose your daily active users. Either way, I think it's a very positive trend to see daily active users continuing to grow in double digits, as well as growth in that month monthly active user number. The problem is when you have slowing users, users it's hard to grow revenue as a social media company. That's why we see Twitter's growth stall. 2016, they were still able to grow revenue and hit a record 2.5 billion. But if we look at the expectations for this year, revenue is expected to decline by 5% to 2.4 billion. That's right, revenue is declining. Twitter's, this is super worrisome for me and I would argue the business model is sort of looking broken. If we layer on profitability onto this chart, you'll see Twitter's never been able to make money on a gap basis. They're always losing by a pretty significant margin. Uh, they haven't had better than negative 10% operating margins for years now. It doesn't look like a good business. And what's even more fascinating is just like all these other enterprise software companies, Salesforce, Splunk, Workday, a bunch of other tech firms, they're trying to tell you that on an adjusted basis, they're actually profitable. Adjusted EBITDA is like 30% margins. No, sure, okay, so that you do have positive free cash flow, you're making up this adjusted EBITDA number, but the bottom line is they're removing all stock-based compensation from their adjusted EBITDA number, and that's why it's making it look so good. Last year, or for the last three years in a row, they've given over 600 million in stock-based compensation to their employees. That's over 25% of revenue. You're not gonna tell me that doesn't matter. This is a reoccurring expense that you're using to motivate employees. This is as real as an expense it gets, and shareholders are in fact paying for it by in dilution, so that's why I think Twitter's adjusted EBITDA number is 100% bullshit. The biggest call that I have in this whole episode is Jack Dorsey, Twitter IR, drop the adjusted EBITDA number. It's not fooling anybody. Just leave the cash flow in there, but you gotta use Gap because it's showing up in dilution. If you take a look at the company's share count, you'll see that it's grown pretty dramatically. It was up 5% last year. It's probably gonna climb another four to 5% this year. And remember, revenue's declining. So on a revenue per share basis, you're losing about 10% this year because of dilution on top of a shrinking business. I don't know. I don't get it. Everybody in the market is using these adjusted EBITDA numbers. I think it makes no sense. This is the biggest reason why I wouldn't own Twitter as a company because you're constantly getting diluted. I think a pretty aggressive amount for what, how big this company is. And I hate dilution. It's my biggest pet peeve. I don't think management's being responsible about it. And if you look at the valuation of Twitter, things are even more baffling. If we assume that at $17 a share with 800 shares outstanding, Twitter is valued about $13.6 billion. Remember, they're only expected to do 2.4 billion in sales in 2020. 
2017. That means they're trading at about six times price sales. This is some. This is a multiple you'd expect a, a profitable, really fast growing, super high quality business to trade at. Twitter really doesn't fit the bill on any of those metrics. So why are they trading at such a premium? I have a couple theories. The first is I think there's always a chance that one of these bigger social media players, Google, Facebook, could buy the company out for its user base, not its business model, and that would justify an even higher premium and the market's kind of pricing that in. Reason number two is I think that the market is giving a lot of credit to Jack Dorsey here that he will eventually figure out a way how to better monetize his user base. It's important to note that he's really been focused on increasing engagement with the app. It seems like less than trying to force near-term monetization. I think this is an excellent strategy and once again, justifying that Dorsey's the right guy for the job, but it's gonna take a while to figure out and I don't think they've cracked the code yet. Six times sales is a lot to pay for a company whose revenue is declining, that's not making money, who's diluting a ton. Like, I just don't like it. Twitter needs to figure out their business model and fast because right now, every day that goes by, they're getting less and less relevant. I think it's getting harder and harder to attract the best talent. This is kind of a business just, just floating towards, I wanna say being obsolete, but it's not. Yet at the same time that from an investment analysis perspective, the business appears to be floating towards being obsolete. From a culture perspective, Twitter is as relevant as ever. Donald Trump never stops tweeting. We're in this new era where public figures and celebrities and personas are reaching out to people directly through this platform of Twitter. I think it's an incredibly powerful and epic idea that anybody can have a voice and connect with anywhere in the world at once. I love the idea and vision of Twitter, but they just don't have a way to make money, right? It's kind of like a charity. Yeah, it's great. Everyone loves it and uses it, but it's not really making money. In fact, you're just pretty much taking dilution or donations from shareholders to run the business. So so until that changes, I would never consider investing in Twitter. I, it's not even that I need them to be profitable or that I need them to start growing again, but I need to see the seeds of a new business model. And I haven't seen that yet. They're still doubling down on doing ads. This whole thing they want to do with live, I think makes a lot of sense. And I think they should keep pushing there, but it's not anywhere near enough mature to generate enough revenue to justify a $13.6 billion valuation. This needs to be a five to $6 billion revenue business to be able to justify upside from your current price. How does Twitter get to five to six billion in revenue? I have no idea and I don't see it happening within the next five years at their current pace. So that's why I'm not bullish on Twitter as a company. Yet in five to 10 years, do I see Twitter still being a cemented in society and are, you know, people are digitally native. It's only gonna get easier and easier. There's gonna be more and more people with smartphones. Twitter has an incredible opportunity to be an amazingly successful and massive platform in the future if they can figure out their business model because culturally this thing is as relevant as ever. But the risk is they can't figure out their business model and eventually talent starts leaving, the product gets worse and worse and we see a slow erosion and death of Twitter, which I, kind of maybe already happening, but I hope it's not because I love to see, I love to use the product every day. Comment, what do you guys think? How can Twitter fix itself? Would you invest in Twitter? To me, the business model is totally broken right now. What's their move? I have a crazy idea that we did a podcast about where they could launch vocal tweets for the new era of voice where you launch like a mini 14 second max soundbite. Think about it, Trump could be yelling something. Kanye could go on a rant. Kim Kardashian could talk to you about some new product she has. I could do a mini rant about a new episode that I'm working on. I think the voice tweet could be a really interesting addition and product to Twitter. And that would be something that's perfectly suited for the Alexa ecosystem that we're all about to live in. Alexa, read me the top five biggest voice tweets from the day. Bam, that's a great way to get news from the people who want you to hear it. That's like one idea I have to kind of reinvigorate or just, I don't know, I just, Twitter needs to mix it up. They gotta do something. So let me know what you guys think. Anyway, that's Hyper Change. Follow me on Twitter. See you guys next time. Peace.